Okay, hello everyone and thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, this is the video related with my with my classes of power system analysis and specifically we are working on short circuit calculations. And if you are watching this video it's because you are interested on uh, some examples related to asymmetrical faults, okay? What is the plan today? Well, the plan today is uh, solving the sample or explaining the sample 3.3, okay? In this case, the, the, the class today is applying uh, symmetrical components in order to calculate the single line to ground short circuits, okay? And the situation is extremely simple. Let's think about this uh, power system. We have been, re we have been using this uh, power system for a uh, few examples already. And in this case, let's consider this simple power system. The single line diagram is over there. There is a synchronous generator. There is a motor and there are coupled transformers and there is a transmission line, okay? You must remember that in the sample number one, we calculate the per unit quantities because the transmission line is, uh, is based on a, a inductive reactance expressed in ohms, and we need to convert that into per unit. And also, you must remember that in the sample 3.1, we calculate the sequence networks that we will be using later in this example. And also, we calculate the Thevenin model for this network at considering a um, fault, a bus bar number uh, two, okay? Well, what is the job today? The job today is to calculate the subtraction for currents in per unit and kiloamps, uh, considering a bolted single line to ground short circuit from phase A to ground at the bus bar number two, okay? Also, the second question is probably very interesting is, Calculate the per unit line to ground voltages at the faulted bus bar 2. Okay? Let's start with the solution. Well, the first thing that you need to understand is um, we have a video explaining asymmetrical short circuits, and over there I discuss many properties related with. A single phase or single line to ground faults, okay? But what you need to understand and what you need to remember from the rest of your life, if you are a power engineer, of course, is that the line to ground fault, the single line to ground fault, the single line to ground fault require that requires the sequence network to be interconnected in series, okay? they must be interconnected in series. And that is what I will do straight away here. From example 3.1, we know that there is a Thevenin equivalent model for positive sequence. We have a Thevenin equivalent model for negative sequence, and we have a Thevenin equivalent model for zero sequence, okay? You must remember from my classes of symmetrical components that the only sequence network that have a, a voltage source is the positive sequence, okay? Because all the synchronous generators, they are designed only to provide positive sequence voltage. And that is the reason that the only source is located here at the uh, positive sequence, okay? I think all of you can see that if we are using this series sequence, there is a beautiful property. And that means that the positive, negative, and zero sequence all of them, they have the same value. And we can calculate that using basic circuit analysis, okay? The configuration is a straightforward. It's just a serious configuration. We can calculate all those components because they are equal. Remember, we are working with a line, single line to ground. 
and as consequence, the three sequence currents, positive, negative, and zero sequence, all of them, they are equal, okay? And using basic circuit analysis, the current will be the unique voltage source that we have here inside the positive sequence network divided by the total impedance. In this case, the total impedance is adding the thevenin from positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence, okay? We put the number together. My students are quite clever. They can do that. Also, there are a few of my examples using MATLAB Live Script at my GitHub. You can download one of them and try the numbers and you will get a specific number, okay? What we got here, what we got here is the result, is the result for the positive sequence current. And the next step is quite interesting, okay? The next step is, okay, Positive negative sequence currents, they are extremely interesting because they will allow me to run calculations, okay? But in real life, I have a three-phase system using A, B, and C. As a consequence, I need to migrate my physical quantities from symmetrical components into the real world that that is A, B, C, okay? For that reason, I will use this beautiful expression over here that using the matrix A, I can translate my quantities from positive, negative, and zero sequence. I can migrate my quantities from that uh, mathematical abstraction and moving and moving into the real world of ABC, okay? What I am showing here is that because we have a single line to ground faults, positive, negative, and zero sequence. All of them, they have the same value. Here, I am substituting, substituting the, the positive sequence. We have the same value. Voila, we got the result, okay? What is really interesting that you must realize here in order that you can be sure that your results are correct is that we are dealing with a phase, uh, with a line, the line A, it's been connected to ground, okay? But it's been connected to ground, but in this case, we know that the other two lines, B and C, there is nothing connected. For that reason, to check your results, you can see that numerically, currents on line B and C must be equal to zero, okay? That is one way that you can check your results and you can be sure that you are doing right, okay? And then, and then, another thing that you must realize is a lot of my students, they don't like to use the, the matrix A because it's so overcomplicated and so on. But to be honest, for me, it's the best way to do the job. Why? because if you are doing everything right, you can demonstrate that B and C, they are zero. And that is one way that you can cover your back and you can be sure that your results are right. Some students, they prefer to use a shortcut, shortcuts that will tell you that the, the, the current on line A will be three times the positive sequence, okay? What I'm telling you, that is the shortcut. I don't suggest that you go straight away to that because you will, you will not be able to demonstrate this. And in some cases, you can make mistakes, okay? Okay, okay. Let's keep moving. Now we have here, this is the beautiful uh, current on... Um, on line A, B, and C, and this is per unit. What is the next step? Okay, let's move to the next step. Okay, next step is we need this, we need the current. Okay, we, we, we are happy that we have the per unit current, but in real life, what we need to use, what we need to use is to um, what we need to do is to okay, what we need to do now is to um, 
to calculate the real current in or, or the current using mm, amps um, you must remember that if we have a quantity in per unit you multiply the quantity by using the appropriate base in this case this is the current base at 13.8 kilo volts and running this multiplication we obtain here that the current at the line A is 24,653 amps, or that is like 24.6 kiloamps, okay? Now the next step is, okay, now we want to calculate what we want to calculate what is the sequence component of voltage at the fault point, okay? What we want to do is to calculate the sequence component of the voltage at the fault point, okay? Okay, uh, probably you are uh, thinking, okay, mm, how do we calculate this? Okay, there are, there are a few ways to do this. Uh, for instance, you can you can use the um, the interconnection here. You have um, positive sequence. This is Thevenin positive sequence. You have the voltage here, and this is the voltage that we are looking for. Then we have here negative sequence. Remember that they are in series connection, Thevenin negative sequence and then we have here zero sequence and this is seven in zero sequence okay and we have the interconnection all of them and this is the positive sequence currents here we have the negative sequence here we have the zero sequence okay what i'm trying to say is we are interested on those voltages over here and I believe all of you, all of you can see that you can use circuit analysis. Remember, this is the current I0. This is the current I2, okay? You can use basic circuit analysis and say this is minus set, uh, set in zero, I0. And you can see here from the negative sequence, this is the Thevenin impedance negative sequence multiplied by the negative sequence current. Okay, and for the positive sequence, you can say that is, remember this is the voltage previous to the fault at the full point, BPF minus uh, uh, Thevenin from positive sequence multiplied by the positive sequence current, okay? You can use these three equations or you can use basically what I did here uh, to save time. And this is the matrix version. OK, you, you can see that those equations here in a matrix form, they are coming from circuit analysis using Kirchhoff voltage law and using Ohm's law. And this matrix form is the compact form of those three equations over here. OK. Okay, let me keep my explanation. What you need to do now is insert the proper numbers, zero, positive, and, and negative sequence. Here we are working, we are dealing with a single line to ground uh, fault as a consequence, positive, negative, and zero sequence. They have the same value. And when we put the number together, oh, wow, here we have something really interesting. Here, the first conclusion is that you can see, that you can see, we get over there, we get over there the three voltages, sequence voltages from sequence for zero sequence, for uh, the negative sequence, a positive sequence, and the zero sequence, okay? Two of them are negative, one of them is uh, positive, okay? Uh, the positive one is coming from the... Um, from the uh, positive sequence. To be honest, that was a result that was expected uh, because if you remember from the circuit analysis that I was explaining, uh, this one have here a negative sign and that in the case that we are neglecting the resistance, okay, that is coming in a negative voltage over there, okay? What is the next step? Well, the next step is quite important 
because the next step, the next step is using symmetrical components. It's using symmetrical components in order in order that we can calculate the voltages. Okay. And what we did is we use the symmetrical component theory. We substitute here, we put here the voltage for zero sequence, positive sequence and negative sequence. Then you can run this calculation. You can use MATLAB or if you prefer by hand, but here there are no surprises. Here they are not surprises. What I mean that you can see here is that first conclusion, and this is extremely important in order that you are sure that your results are correct, we are having a fault that is located at line A. And this fault over here is completely right because the terminal voltage is zero. That is happening, of course, because we are using a voltage fault. But this is one way that my students can check if the fault impedance is zero for the case of single line to ground well, the voltage in that line should be zero, okay? The other two voltages, you can see something very important here also. We use the name of healthy lines. Why? Why we use the name healthy lines? We use the name healthy faces or healthy lines because they are not affected by any fault, okay? And because they are not affected by any fault, we say we use the terminology that is the healthy lines. OK, and what you need to recognize is both magnitudes, they are a bit over uh, one per unit. OK, and because they are one, uh, they are above one per unit, you must understand that that represent that represent this is zero per unit here that represent a over voltage. What I'm trying to say is, in this case, when we have a single line to ground fault, there is a over voltage at the lines, the healthy lines, I mean B and C, okay? Well, this is all for this example regarding, uh, regarding a single line to ground. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you find it useful and please uh, feel free to submit your comment or if you wish, you can email me. Okay, thank you. Bye now.